Think above and never beneath. I, that's, that's what I want you thinking for all of your days. You come here, that's what I want on your life, on, on one of your thinking. That's what I do every single day that I get up and I begin to dress. I dress myself, but not just my body. And most people been dressing their bodies and have not been dressing their soul. Today on Living by Faith. Situation that you come up to. So the Bible says, ask God and he'll freely give it to you. Well, that word ask is the word in the Greek translated the demand. So I'm not asking like I don't have it, but I'm making a demand of the wisdom that's already in me. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Now, there's an authority that has literally been overlooked as it relates to the believer's life. That's why God is raising up leaders who have a prophetic overview of what's going on. It ain't enough to just be saying I'm this or I'm that. Yeah. God must have his hand on you. Yeah. Or your little bit of stuff is going to diminish and dwindle because if God's hand isn't on what you say God's hand is on, we are about to see. My mama used to tell me, don't play with God. She didn't understand with respect of it playing with God as though God was going to get at us because God is not going to get out at, at you. God will literally just back out of the equation and let you just destroy yourself. His mercy is always crying out to you. His grace is always being extended to, to you. But if, in fact, you want to live life the way you want to live and be seductive by, seduced by this culture or by this society, there's going to be a drifting away of the body of Christ like never before. And it is one of the most perfect and most beautiful strategies that I've ever seen in the earth from the kingdom of heaven collaborating with earth. But it's a strategy because along every certain period of time as it relates to the history of the body of Christ, disaster will hit to turn the church attention back to her God. Y'all better hear what I'm telling you. I know it like I'm standing here. And you can placate, you can literally play with this relationship or this connection if you want to. You can keep minimizing who you think I am and not receive who God says I am and the exchange won't profit your household. But if you will receive that God has set up pastors after his own heart, not somebody who's just trying to get paid, not just somebody who wants some notoriety and attention, not someone who's bitter and messed up about where they stand. I'm talking to somebody who's been called of God, ordained of God from the foundation of the earth. Because we don't need more churches. We just need more men of God. This is the most strategic thing that I've ever seen 
and Debbie and all of my born again years, a collaboration of heaven and earth. If my people, Second Chronicles, who are called, where are his people? Are his people in this house? <laughs> this is the hour where the church of the living God, this is the finest hour for believers all over the world. Let your light shine. People are confused. People are miserable. They are distraught. They don't know where to turn. And you are this earth's answer. Push that person in front of you say, don't play with me. Don't play with me. Turn around and say, I'm not, but you better keep your hand. <laughs> okay. This is going to spin your religious head right off your right off your body. This next statement. Ladies and gentlemen, somewhere about 2,000 years ago, Jesus was replaced in the earth. And I have an announcement. You are his replacement. Look at your head. Your head don't know how to handle that. You're trying to run that through your religion. You can't take a spiritual matter and run it through a natural mind. You're going to have to take this spiritual matter and run that through your spirit into a renewed way of thinking so you can become what he established you as. You are far more than what you know. You're not just a human. God, dog. You are a spirit being, not just a human being, but you are a spiritual being having human experiences. You live upstairs, but you had to come downstairs among those who live downstairs to get them upstairs. But your upstairs thinking never changed. You came downstairs with upstairs thinking, and that's why you're going to be considered strange. And I need you to become more God inside minded. God lives in me. I am his address. And wherever I go, God is. And when this revelation wants this understanding rises big in you like it ought to, when you step on the scene of any situation, it must obey you. You're going to start recognizing miracle after miracle, sign and wonder after sign and wonder. See, some of y'all can't even wrap your head around this simply because you've been living like downstairs people from upstairs. And the, uh, and the seduction of downstairs has seduced you in the way of downstairs thinking when you upstairs material. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for all there is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And most of you have relinquished your understanding and you're fitting into a culture that you're supposed to take over. Those who know are going to rise up. Those who've been playing are going to be drawn to get into their proper place. 
you're going to start coming to church like you've never had just to hear my voice. You ain't going to rush like you've been rushing and waiting and looking at your time pieces like at a certain time. You're going to want me to keep talking, and then that's where I'm going to leave. I'm going to pay you back. I'm going to pay you back because when I wanted to keep talking, you didn't want to listen. But now you want me to keep talking, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave you hanging to make you come back the next week. I promise you, you mark my word on this. I know what I'm doing. You ain't dealing with somebody who just taking shots in the dark. When I say something, you better receive it hook, line, and sinker. You better just, listen to me, because when you and I speak, it's just like God speaking. Oh, I'll say that. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of God told me to tell you that there's some supernatural things that's going to happen in your life and in your family life before Christmas. that the rest of this year is going to be the best of, you better hear what I'm saying, because of the supernatural occurrences, stuff is just going to come to you. God, dog, here and there, everywhere you turn. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. Pastor, how are you so sure? Because I said so. Who do you think you are? You don't have enough time. I'm the blood bought, blood washed child of the most high God that's been tagged. And I ain't talking about on no Facebook or Instagram. I'm talking about from heaven. Give, give, give me a couple of... 13 year old, quick, give me some. Come in, um, uh, Jawan. Uh, d d I know you ain't 13. I know you. Uh, uh, that, that's all right, baby. I got one. Stand up, boy. You about 17. <laughs> this is my son. How old are you? 21. 21. Close. <laughs> How old are you? 21. <clears throat> Y'all heard? of the game of tag? You, 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 have you heard that game? <laughs> come back, come back. I, no, 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 no. <laughs> this time, when I tag you, you can't give it back. You got to tag somebody else who hadn't been tagged. Because once I give it to you, I don't want it back. God came into the earth 2,000 years ago. And he said, I'm going away. And it's best that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the advantage that I prepare for you can't come. So I'm tagging both of y'all. And what I need you to do is go tag others. Twelve men got tagged when he left. There's reported 250 million Christians in America. Where is this power? Let's look over this thing for a minute. Once you get tagged, you are supposed to tag others. Jamal, how many people have you led yourself to Jesus Christ this year? 590 people. Personally. Now watch this. Watch this. Don't clap because it's about to backfire. 
he has just replaced from anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 Christians. Almost 600 people by himself. I say he's replaced about 1,500 to 2,000 Christians. You know how I can say that? Look over your own life and you tell me how many, don't speak it out, how many have you led to the Lord? And in some of you all cases, none. And you've been tagged, but you haven't tagged anybody else, but you looking to God and asking God to help. You know what literally just kind of caused me to go into spasms? When I hear Christians say, I'm just going to put it all in God's hand. That's the equivalent of playing tag like the people downstairs. Because the people downstairs, when they tag you, you can tag them back. And all y'all doing, <laughs> church folk. Nobody outside. Stop playing. <laughs> he been tagged, but who has he tagged? You been tagged. You call yourself a Christian, and you standing up, and you saying stuff like, I'm going to turn it over to God. And God has turned it over to you. Let's deal with this. Have a seat, Jim. Have a seat. Let's deal with this. Let's deal with this a bit. When you and I made Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives, we forfeited the right to do life on our own. Is that correct? We said Jesus come into our lives. He came into our lives. And it's our responsibility to make him Lord. Say Lord. Lord means master, ruler, and controller. So he's the master, ruler, and controller over our lives. It's no longer our will, but his will. It's no longer our view, but his view. It's no longer our opinion, but his opinion. It's no longer our objective, but his objective. It's his will from now on. Say that. It's his will. So... Once we receive him, the Bible says it's not enough just to receive him, but to move on, Brother Brian, to the next place in him where we receive the baptism with Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's what John 16 talks about. In the event I don't have the opportunity to discuss John 16 with you, I need you to read John 16, but I'm about to present to you an overview of it. When you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, he said that's not enough. That's the born of the Spirit experience. Now there's a subsequent experience where you become filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Spirit is receiving the baptism of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. That's the promise, the comforter. John 16 talks about that. The Word says in James chapter number 1, that if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, and he'll give to that man wisdom freely. Now, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, he says, Jesus has become wisdom for us. Jesus has become wisdom for us. So, subsequently, when I've received Jesus, I've also received what, folks? Wisdom. wisdom. So, you have all the answers on the inward parts of you. Say that, I'm full, I'm full of this earth's answers. This earth's now, here's the instruction that the Spirit of God told me to give you. Write this down or don't you ever get, forget it. Watch your spending. Watch your spending. 
Well, what does that have to do with anything? I don't know in its totality. I'm just obeying God. Watch your spending. If you're ever going to spend anything from this moment forth, inquire of the Lord before you pull the trigger, especially with major purchases. The Spirit of God told me to tell you to literally fortify yourselves in sowing and saving. Say that, sowing and saving. Watch your spending. Fortify yourselves in sowing and in saving. Now, some of you all were with me back in the day before the recession hit. The Spirit of God, I see a hand going up. The Spirit of God, I see another hand going up. Thank you, I see your hand. Thank you, I see your hand, like altar call. I see your hand. Watch this, watch this. And then that recession hit. And some people were caught off God. Here are the continuing instructions. Get at least six months of your budget in savings. Where, whereas though if something were to occur for six months where you didn't have a job or income coming in, it wouldn't shake you. And you can sit there and not receive these instructions. But I've done my job. I don't know what's about to happen, what's about to hit. It is not God's responsibility to tell me everything about that. He gives him bits and pieces. A little here, a little there. Brian, you may get a piece. Debbie may get a piece. You may get a piece. And then we, but if we don't put our pieces together, this is just a piece that you may have already been talked to about. So put this peace in your lifestyle. Now, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, well, how could we lack wisdom if the one who has become wisdom for us lives in us? Well, it's not talking about the lack that's in you. It's talking about the lack that's around you. And so in your thinking, your intellect, you may not know how to respond to a situation that you come up to. So the Bible says, ask God and he will freely give it to you. Well, that word ask is the word in the Greek translated de demand. So I'm not asking like I don't have it, but I'm making a demand of the wisdom that's already in me. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? I ask you a question. Hunt your neighbor said, if you don't start responding to pastor, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I asked God about this situation. It was so funny. It wasn't funny. It was funny to me, but it wasn't funny for the person who just found out. Dee Dee and I were talking and one of the partners of this ministry, their name came up in our, our hearts in our discussion. The Spirit of God told us to buy them a car. And I said, okay, Didi, let's just do it. A day later, we get a knock at the door. That's a lie. You hear yourself lying. I ain't had to knock at the door, and I don't know how long. You can't get to my door. I got a ring at the gate. And I know when you're at my gate. Don't, don't, don't play around my gate. Because I can see you around my gate. If I'm in Timbuktu, I can see you at my gate. I'm installing something that could come out of the ground <laughs> and roll your car backwards or something. <laughs> if that ain't true, that's not. <laughs> we open the gate, they come up. Come outside. Guess what I got? I got a new car. I got a new car. And Dee Dee and I were looking at each other like, Dang, they messed up. And they, they're looking like, y'all not happy? Yeah, we, we happy. 
but you would have been more happy than us because God already told us to buy you one. But you took your money and jumped out without inquiring of him. Just because you got money to buy it, God want to demonstrate something. And if you're not asking him about what you should be doing with the money you have, you could be literally spending when that seed could have become sowing opportunity. Now, the same money that she has to spend could have been her seed to sow, and there's a harvest to that sowing. But what if God has in mind somebody buying your next home for you? Thank you for viewing Living by Faith. If you would like to obtain a copy of today's lesson or any other featured item, please give us a call at 1-888-630-4540. Oh, come on, Grady. You can't, you can't do it just to fit in because the others want you to bring down your standard. You got to stay up because when daddy gets back, when daddy gets back, he ain't going to be talking to them. I'm going to go right to Brittany. Brittany did not tell you. What an awesome time it is to be a woman in the body of Christ. Why? Because I have something planned just for you. Something so invigorating, something so exciting, something that's gonna be so amazing that you will not want to miss. God's Glamorous Girls is coming July the 11th through the 13th. You want to be in Baltimore because it is going down. The Fellowship presents God's Glamorous Girls. I'm inviting all of you to come and be a part of it. We have some amazing artists that are gonna be there. We have some awesome speakers that are gonna be there ministering to you. And I wanna see you there. I wanna touch you. I wanna feel you. I want you to know that I care about you. So I need to see you so I can communicate that with you. See you there, July the 11th through the 13th in Baltimore. to experience a move of God like never before. God's decree, yes indeed. Things are gonna happen so fast, it's gonna make your head swim. It says that you're not gonna be able to keep up. And I am expecting God to do a quick work in here. Some of you came in here, you need healing, you need deliverance, you need salvation, you need a friend, you need love. You just need to know that the mercy of God exists for you. Whatever you need in this place this week, I guarantee you that you won't leave here the same way that you have come in, in the name of Jesus. If you're ever in the Washington or Baltimore metropolitan areas, we invite you to worship with us at one of our Saturday evening or Sunday morning services. Please give us a call at 1-888-630-4540.